classic story-based RPGs. When we talk about computer role-playing games, the first thought is usually the top-down, isometric Dungeons & Dragons kind of game. Baldur's Gate 3 released and became one of the biggest games in the world, and although that's hard to beat, maybe some of these games can come close or at least give you another flavor to enjoy. Let's find out and welcome to upcoming D&D-like CRPG games in 2024. For an impressive looking one, New Arc Line. Take a stand in the eternal conflict between arcane magic and steampunk revolution and tip the uneasy balance between sorcery, elves, dwarves, and mysterious monsters on one side and steampunk gadgets, zeppelins, and tesla guns on the other in this single-player, party-based, story-rich RPG. Will you rise to the occasion? In this game, you can become the hero or the villain that you want to be. You create your own character and make choices as you see fit. You gather up your party, where you meet and recruit a diverse cast of characters, and you learn their stories, face their demons together, and you help them grow. You can master technology or magic, and you command your party in turn-based tactical battles, where you can fight head-on and brute force your way through encounters, or you can be more careful by analyzing and observing, so you can see how else you can make your way through. Overall, this game does look very impressive from what we've seen so far, visually and gameplay-wise. So for an upcoming CRPG, this one is probably one of the biggest ones to watch. At the time of recording, it is just saying that it's releasing sometime in 2024, so you can keep an eye on it until it releases then. Next, we've got Unforetold Witchstone. This is an RPG sandbox with a deep reactive influence system that allows you to shape the fate of the world. Here you experience the living reactive lands of Kalsundia, and the game is promising unprecedented options to roleplay your character, influence others, and set your own goals in a non-linear narrative system. Relationships and outcomes change dynamically, and there's supposed to be so much consequence to your choices and actions. There is also turn-based combat and stealth systems, so that's always nice to have in these sorts of games, along with a ton of character customization. You gather your party, set out, and explore the world, and find your path, which could take you down any road, and who knows where you'll end up. Now this one also does look very nice so far. It's been going through development and even had a name change, but it overall seems to be coming together. Now if they manage to deliver on their promise of this living reactive world, where your choices do really matter, that would be very interesting and fun to see. However, a lot of RPGs tend to promise things like that, and it sort of turns out okay, but nothing really groundbreaking. This one is promising groundbreaking. They use the word unprecedented. So they're setting the bar real high and we'll have to see if they manage to do it. There's no particular release window. It's just coming soon right now. And I am very intrigued how Unforetold Witchstone will turn out. For a bit more steampunk, Sovereign Syndicate. This is a Victorian steampunk RPG with tarot cards instead of dice. You investigate the disappearance of society's most vulnerable to uncover a mysterious cult. You play as three characters, each with their own skills and motivations. You get to customize them with narrative choices and you unlock new tarot cards. So there's an open world to explore and you can solve your problems with combat, persuasion, magic or explosives. So there's a multitude of ways where you can make your way through obstacles. The unique thing really is the tarot card chance system. So instead of dice, you have the tarot cards, which does sort of make things kind of feel different. And that's kind of nice. Not everything is dice. And although there's the basis of RNG, it's nice to have some options and variety. There's a skill and etiquette system. It is the Victorian age after all. And the three characters you get to control do seem very 
different, so that's always nice. But the stories they live out are intertwined, so it all comes together. Now, this one also does seem very promising, but you can have a closer look yourself. It is releasing set for 15th of January 2024, so not too long from now, and you can kick off the new year with this game. But also, at the time of recording, there is a free demo you can just jump into and try. So there's no secrets or hiding for Sovereign Syndicate. Just have a look yourself. And if you're into it, then you can get it as it releases relatively soon. Okay, for a retro approach, which is retro in almost every sense of the word, Scald Against the Black Priory. This is an RPG that I've been watching for a while, and it goes full on into the 80s aesthetic with the pixel art and the kind of retro classic gameplay, though it does have its modernizations in terms of gameplay and UI design and stuff like that. This is a party-based RPG set in a grim, dark fantasy world of tragic heroes, violent deaths, and Lovecraftian horror. Choices matter as you explore an engaging, branching story mixed with crunchy, tactical, turn-based combat and character customization. I've played some of this in terms of the earlier demos, and the choices you can make and the story that unfolds is already very interesting. And at the time of recording, there is still a free demo that you can just go and try yourself. Overall, for an RPG in terms of old-school role-playing, this is definitely one of the best I've experienced in recent years. Though I do get if you're not all that into the 80s aesthetic and it might be a bit too old-school for you. Either way, right now it is sort of set for a 2023 release, but we're approaching the end of the year and there's no fixed release date yet, so I'll just throw it in with the 2024 games because this one's worth mentioning and it might be delayed into the next year. So so if you like the 80s and 80s gaming and old school proper classic role playing games, then go ahead and try Scald Against the Black Priory. Hey, now that you're a bit into the list, I'm sure you're enjoying it, so it would be greatly appreciated if you can like the video. Alright, next game. Gene Forge 2 Infestation. This is another classic sort of 90s styled RPG which is from a developer that actually makes a lot of RPGs that are like this. Over the years, if you see what Spiderweb Software has made, they've made a lot of niche, sort of more cult classics, which aren't mainstream successes, but they've all been these classic styled open-ended fantasy adventures, and this is the latest one coming from them. In this particular game, you use battle or diplomacy and trickery to change the world, served by an army of custom-made mutant monsters. There's almost 90 zones to explore and 50 plus hours of gameplay being promised, and there's supposed to be an enormous range of abilities, factions, quests, and paths to victory. Hence them saying this is a truly open-ended fantasy adventure in an alien world. It all sounds very promising and very interesting, and considering the number of games that these developers have put out, out, which are all very well liked by the niche community around them. This one seems to be as promising as ever. So if you like the 90s styled kind of more classic RPG, Gene Forge 2 Infestation seems like it'll be right up your alley. But maybe if you're looking for a more modern experience, it won't be quite what you're looking for. Either way, it is set for a quarter one 2024 release window. So it's not too long until the release of Spiderweb Software's latest RPG. Then, for an RPG that we've been watching for years, Alaloth Champions of the Four Kingdoms. This is an RPG that I listed years ago, and it went into early access in 2022 after many years development, and it's been playable since, and it's still in early access. This game is supposed to be like if Baldur's Gate and Dark Souls had a baby. An RPG game that blends real-time action with an isometric view set in a world of magic and monsters. You navigate through dangerous dungeons, battle fierce bosses, and uncover ancient secrets to save Plamen from an impending doom. So this has been a long time in the making, and the original release window was supposed to be about a year in early access, so we're well past that at this point. 
but does seem to be developing well. The footage they're showing off and the game itself has been coming along, the environments are very detailed, the art looks great, and for the many hundreds of user reviews on Steam at this point, it's 75% positive, which is overall kind of good. But also, it's been in development for years, so there's no real clear release window. The real-time combat, making it a bit more like a Souls-like, but still holding on to the, all the RPG elements, I think is what many would be interested in. But also it sort of straddles between the two genres, which is probably why it's not universally liked either. Alaloth Champions of the Four Kingdoms seems to be trying to tap into a particular underserved niche, and it seems to be hitting it so far, but when it will fully release and be completed is unclear. Then for another RPG that we've been watching for years, but it's got a good name, Death Trash. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I always love the title of Death Trash because it just sounds so heavy. Now, Death Trash is a game that is very interesting. It's in more independent development and it's been in development for many years and it's been in early access since 2021. But it's a post-apocalyptic world where cosmic horrors long for humanity, but all the people are punks with shotguns. This game combines old school role playing with modern action gameplay. So although you might see the combat footage and think that this is sort of an action RPG kind of thing, it is actually kind of more of a classic RPG when it comes down to it. It's just the combat that is fast paced and reactive. The interesting thing about this is that the term gore punk was actually used to describe the setting. And you know, when it comes to settings, if you're not too clear of how it works, basically there's punk and then there's core. So for example, steampunk means the world runs on steam. Whenever it's a punk thing, it means the world runs on it. Meanwhile, when it's core, like cottage core, it's more of a thematic thing, like cottagecore is just, you know, it's very cottage rustic aesthetic, right? If you were to say cottage punk, it meant the world ran on cottages and that doesn't really make sense. So anyway, with death trash, the term gore punk was used. And when I jumped into the demo, I'm like, what does that even mean? Surely it means gore core or something, but no, death trash is gore punk. The world runs on meat. And if you don't know what that means, well, there's a free demo you can check out and you will find out what that means. Death Trash is coming along really nicely. It's got overwhelmingly positive reviews so far on Steam, going through early access, 95% positive. The humor is funny. The setting is grim, dark. The RPG mechanics and the story and the dialogue, it's all very interesting. And the combat itself, even if you don't like the fast-paced action-ish combat, it does play really nicely. Oh, also, the pixel art is just phenomenally beautiful. It's sort of a hand-drawn pixel art kind of approach. It's a weird style. It's like pixel art and painting came together. So that's always kind of cool. So it is more of an indie development, so we have no idea when it will fully release. The developer also is a little unclear about when 1.0 will be on the way, but it does seem worth jumping into now if you are very intrigued with the setting and the story, and people are really liking it. So go check out Death Trash. Then, for a game that's already a huge success, Stone Shard. This is a challenging turn-based RPG set in an open world. You experience the unforgiving life of a medieval mercenary, travel across the war-torn kingdom, fulfill contracts, fight, mend your wounds, and develop your character without any restrictions. There's an open world to explore, an economy to take part in, there's over 200 plus abilities and 400 equipment pieces to customize your character with, a promise of tons of enemy variety, tactical battles, a psyche system with morale and mental conditions, and there are plans for more content including a caravan and development to the main story. There is also an Iron Man mode if you prefer permadeath, but that is an option. Now, this has been going through early access for a while, since early on in 2020, so we're approaching four years right now in early access, but there are tens of thousands of user reviews on Steam, and not the most positive, but still mostly positive at 75%. So uh, most people are liking it, but it is basically already a success with so many people playing it. 
Now, they do say full release is scheduled for 2023 to 2024, which means we should be seeing a full release of Stone Shard over the next year, which has been a long enough time coming, I think. Though through early access, updates and improvements have been relatively regular as well, so you don't really have to wait for full release. If you want to jump into it, I think now is a kind of good time to do it. But it should be fully releasing over the next year if you want to wait for Stone Shard. With another touch of steampunk, Revolution the Spark. Embark on a perilous journey through a corrupt government in this story-driven steampunk RPG. In this game, you explore nine distinct areas, assemble a team of fearless allies, and decide if you want to foster peace or lead everyone towards a violent uprising. One option does sound more fun than the other, but you know, peace is always a choice. You recruit up to 25 allies across 7 unique classes, and you can begin the revolution, mainly through turn-based combat, where you get up close to enemies and make certain decisions in dialogue as you strategize yourself and your allies' next move through a grid-based map. The art style is very nice, hand-drawn environments, always nice to see, and through this game you will be forging your own path. You can be cunning or resort to violence. Generally, this game does look really nice and has this very sort of tense, interesting setting, all building up to that possible revolution. But either way, something's gonna have to give and things are going to have to change. And that's where you come in. That's always a great premise for an RPG. Everything's on the brink of collapse and you show up and push it one way or the other. That's always fun. Now, right now, there's no particular release window for Revolution the Spark, but we should be seeing more of it over the next year. And if you're looking for a new tactical turn-based CRPG, then this one seems pretty promising. For a post-apocalyptic zombie RPG, Urban Strife. This is meant to be an old-school, turn-based strategy, post-apocalyptic survival RPG. You recruit deranged locals in your militia, ally with local factions, and fight those that you hate. You haul loot back and rebuild your shelter, doctor your wounds, and fix your guns. People need feeding, booze needs brewing, and there's an end of the world to enjoy here in Urban Strife. Now, combat here is pretty simulated with real ballistics in terms of bullets and collision. There's body parts targeting, which I think is pretty important in a tactical RPG and does lend itself to the zombie thing as well. And there are survival mechanics where you'll be building up a shelter and you need to farm crops and food and make sure you have all the resources you need to actually live and survive in this zombie apocalypse. So although this is not your traditional kind of RPG, it is an RPG primarily, and it seems to kind of feel like a more expanded Project Zomboid, but maybe that's setting the expectations too high considering how popular that is. Either way, a zombie apocalypse RPG is a nice addition to this list, although zombies are pretty common in most genres, you don't actually get too many of them in the classic RPG kind of style. So Urban Strife seems like one to watch if you like the post-apocalyptic setting, but for now, it's just coming soon. All right, these last two games are pretty set to release by the end of 2023, but the end, so I'll list it here because it's mostly a 2024 game. And we've got Zoria Age of Shattering. This is a squad-based tactical RPG with fluid turn-based combat, outposts and follower management, and it's set in an expansive fantasy world of Zoria. You lead a team of four heroes with their unique skills and perks, and every team member contributes to the battles. You are the commander leading your team through this world, and you explore the world of Zoria, which has fallen prey to the sheer brutality of the Hellspawn that roams its lands. Combat is dynamic and turn-based, which is expected of RPGs at this point, but there's also crafting, resting, and survival mechanics, which you'll have to manage to stay alive. An important note is that there is also base management here. You do build up your outpost. It's not just a party-based RPG, but there's a little bit of base management and development as well, which, you know, I think a bit of base development is always kind of nice to have. 
Now, Zoria Age of Shattering is set to release quarter 4 2023 unless it is delayed and there is also a free demo to check out so you can just have a quick look at Zoria Age of Shattering and see if it's something you want to jump into when it releases relatively soon. And then we have the Thaumaturge. This is a story-driven RPG with morally ambiguous choices, one of my favorite things in gaming. And it takes place in the culturally diverse world of early 20th century Warsaw. In this world, Salutors exist. Those are esoteric beings that only Thaumaturges can truly perceive and use for their needs. So this is an isometric, story-rich RPG with turn-based combat, so it's perfect for this list. Though I do have to say it is set for a 5th of December 2023 release date, so it is technically a 2023 game, but it's right at the end, so you know. I wanted to tell you about it anyway. Plus it looks really good so far. It's got an interesting setting, it's 1905, you get to shape your story in a fully fledged RPG, develop your character, there's influence and manipulation mechanics, and you can tame the power of those salutors in a world that's supposed to be very historically accurate to Warsaw at the time. So genre and mechanics wise, the Thaumaturge is perfect for this list. It's not technically a 2024 game unless it gets delayed, but I think if you're watching this list, you'll be interested in this one. There you have it. Press the like button and use the GOG referral link below to support videos like this one. Thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members who really support this channel and keeping videos like these being made. If you want to stay in the know for another genre, go to the next list video linked on the screen as I'm sure classic RPG fans like yourself would not want to miss all the action adventure and first person role playing games in the other lists. Thanks for watching, and I will see you there.